All right, good morning, everybody. It's April 24th, 2018. Welcome to the Assessment Appeals Hearing Officers Meeting uh, for Ventura County. And let's see, let's do a roll call. Yes, uh, Hearing Officer Curtis, are you present this morning? I am present today. Thank, Thank you. you. And let's see, uh, next, Pledge of Allegiance. Could everybody please stand and face the flag and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please remain standing uh, to be read your oath. Yes, I'm not going to place you all under oath. When I complete standing your oath, please stay. Please raise your right arm. You need to please call me a friend. The testimony you're about to give and the matters now pending before this hearing officer will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. You may now be seated. Thank you, everybody. Uh, next, uh, the clerk of the board is going to do an agenda review to see who's here and who's not here and to see uh, what's going on. So go ahead. Yes, it's a quite it. lengthy. It's a full two pages, so then in just a second. Uh, we're going to start with item nine. Application number 17-10178, applicant Ming Do. We're making the agenda to do the submission of a withdrawal. Item number 10, application number 17-10184, applicant Rocco Belmonte, continue to May 22nd, 2018, pending receipt original stipulation. Uh, item number 11, application number 17-10243, applicant Jeffrey Witt, continue to May 22nd, 2018, pending receipt original stipulation. Item number 12, application number 17-10371, applicant Christopher Traeger, continue to May 22nd, 2018, Pending receipt original stipulation. Item number 13, application number 17-10412, applicant Chia's Pilates Evolved Holdings Limited, Miles Mangram, continue to May 22nd, 2018, pending receipt of the original stipulation. Item number 14, application number 17-10483, applicant Diane Napa, continue to May 22nd, 2018, pending receipt original stipulation. Item number 17, application number 17-10734, applicant Sandra L. Gruel Trust, Sherry and Mark Gruel, continue to May 22nd, 2018, pending receipt of original stipulation. Item numbers 19 through 21, application number 17, 10776 through 17 slash 10778, applicant Nelson Chavez, denied due to lack of appearance. Uh, That's you? Okay. Um, you did, uh, okay, we'll get to that. So we're moving items 19 through 21 from the agenda review. Um, Okay. Number 22, application number 17 slash 10792, applicant Maria Gabriel, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 23, application number 17, 10800, applicant Daniel Villanueva Ortiz and Kristen Anna Majda Trust, continue to May 22nd, 2018, pending receipt of original stipulation. Item number 24, application number 17 slash 10810, applicant Thomas Bogler, uh, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 31, uh, application number 1710818, applicant Peter Bay Trust, continue to May 22nd, 2018, to original stipulation. Item number 32, application number 17 slash 10822, applicant Fernando Avalar, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 33, application number 1710831, applicant Virginia Elbeck, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 34, application number 17 slash 11126, applicant Byron Van Gorp, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 35, application uh, number 17 slash 11127, applicant Ramiro and Irma Rosas, denied due to lack of appearance. Second page. Item number 36, application number 17 slash 11128, applicant Derek uh, Bacon, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 37, application number 17 slash 11129, applicant Mandhar Chawla, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 38, application number 17 slash 11131, applicant Kenneth Moy, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 39, application number 17 slash 11133, applicant Michael Pham, denied due to lack of appearance. Item numbers 41 through... Uh, 40 through 41, application number 17-11134 and 17-11135, applicant MKP Investments LLC, Michael Pham, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 42, application number 17-11136, applicant Peter Petrowski, denied due to lack of appearance. 
Item number 43, application number 17 slash 11137, applicant Michael Renzikov, denied due to lack of appearance. Item numbers 44 through 45, application number 17 slash 11138 and 17 slash 11139, Peter and Lisa Ungar, uh, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 49, application number 17 slash 11179 through 7, uh, App, app, no, let me start over. Item number 49, application number 17 slash 11179, applicant Rudy Lopez, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 50, application number 17 slash 11185, applicant Cassandra D. Foster and Michael Posner, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 52, application number 17 slash 11200, uh, Ram Ben Shosham, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 53, application number 17 slash 11276, applicant Susanna and Ivo Gonchovzaska, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 54, application number 17 slash 11277, applicant Timothy Seymour, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 55, um, application number 17 slash 11286, applicant Vanessa Rice, denied due to lack of appearance. Item number 56, application number 17, slash 11351, applicant Mavash Zanelli, continue to May 22nd, 2018, continue to receive a registered stipulation. Item 57, application number 17, slash 11356, applicant William and Deanna Kimball, continue to May 22nd, 2018, continue to receive a registered stipulation. Uh, just to confirm, um, other than, let's see. Mr. Other than Mr. Chavez, did anyone else hear their name called? You didn't. You did not hear your name called. Perfect. Um, the clerk of the board recommends approval of the agenda review as read. Okay. Did anybody hear their name called besides you? No? I didn't hear my name called. Good. You skipped over mine. Good. That's good. Because these are all, because that means you're here. Okay. Uh, any comments from the assessor? No comments from the assistant. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and approve the agenda review as read by the clerk. Uh, item number six. Any public comments before we start? Okay. Hearing none. There's no hearing officer comments. So we'll move to uh, the rest of the items. Thank you, um, Brendan, for reading all of those. I used to have to read that and it would take a half hour so. <laughs> Good that he's reading it. Okay, the first item um, is item number eight. Yes, can we skip that for a second? I'm, sure. I'm, we're doing some follow up on that one, and I don't have time to figure it out. So we, can we come back to that and just jump to uh, item number fifteen? Fifteen, sure. Uh, so that would be application number one seven one zero five eight five, Dolores Christianson. Yes, uh, this applicant indicated they would withdraw. They did not show up this morning. Therefore, the recommended action is to deny due to lack of appearance. Is Dolores here today or no? No, Dolores. Any comments from the assessor? Uh, Christopher Horn for the assessor's office. Uh, the applicant was previously here on March 13th. We had discussions. We clarified the issues. And we were given notification over the phone that uh, this would be withdrawn and both the clerk of the board and myself feel this needs to be DLA. Okay. So you didn't hear anything else? No, no. I just, it was, oh yes, the, the, the question's been resolved and uh, I plan on withdrawing this case and that the latter part never happened. Okay. So we'll go ahead and deny that due to lack of occurrence. Thank you. Next item is item 16, application 1710703, RNC Newman Revocable Trust, Richard and Christine Newman. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How, how are you? Okay, thank you. Um, are you prepared to move ahead with your presentation? Yes. Oh, okay. And to the assessor? Uh, the assessor is also ready. Uh, we estimate about 15 minutes. Sir, about the same? Good. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to run through the rest of the oh, agenda so and then we'll come back to you. I'm I sorry. just want to see who's here. Uh, some people might have a Excuse continuance, me, but you'll probably be the first one uh, that we will hear your presentation. Thank you so much. 
Next item is item number 18, application 171070, Brian Winnick and Anne Marie Branch Winnick. Yes, I'm Brian Winnick. Hey, Brian. Are you ready to move ahead with your presentation? Uh, I'd like to uh, file for a continuance if I could. Sure. And, um, okay, so the continuation. Yeah. Um, or, yes, if we continue, the options are May 22nd or October 16th. Um, okay. Depending on uh, if the assessor has an opinion on the, resolving this. The May 22nd is really impacted for the residential cases, which that's what we seem to have. Uh, so we're not saying something couldn't be resolved prior to, <coughs> but we're asking uh, we're asking for October 16th on anything that's continued today for, for residential at least. Now you can also move to the uh, board too if you want it before October, right? Can you do that? Um, we could go to June. Um, with, uh, I think it's June 25th with the full assessment appeals board um, if that is what the applicant... June 26th? 25th. 25th. So that would be, if you wanted it uh, before October, uh, you would be presenting in front of three people instead of just one person. If, if it wasn't resolved prior to. Yes. And hopefully you'll communicate with the assessor between now and whatever date that you choose and hopefully something will be resolved and you wouldn't, you wouldn't have to come back. So. You're okay with the October 16th date? Or? Yeah, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Okay. Okay, so we just have a request to continue to October 16th, 2018. Okay, so we'll go ahead and continue that. And in the meantime, um, please just communicate with the assessor um, if you have any questions. And does the assessor have any questions? Yes, Mr. Winning, your contact person is right there. Right here. <laughs> that's Rick Denham. That's how quick uh, we'll, we'll get you in communication with our office. Thank you. Yeah, so if you were to come to a resolution with the assessor, you would not have to come back. If you did not come to a resolution, we would see you back on October 16th. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Okay, the next item would be then items 19 through 21, application 171076 through 778. Nelson Chavez. Hello. Hello. I need to place you under oath real quick so oh, you can yeah. stand up. You solemnly affirm that the testimony you're about to give in the matters now pending before this hearing officer will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Oh. Yes. Thank you. Um, all right. So this one, of our records don't indicate that you submitted your confirmation of appearance at least 30 days in advance of the hearing. Um, so we sent you a hearing date confirmation notice form, and it doesn't appear you returned that. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, so what has to happen today is you have to be rescheduled, and, and this applies to everyone that didn't submit their confirmation. Uh, you have to be rescheduled to a later date. Um, be, and um, do you, is this a this is a few properties? Is this a residential property? Okay, sir. Is this? Uh, I'm noticing what three appeals are they all the same property? Uh, no. Three okay. Properties? I just didn't know if it, if it had to deal with a mistransfer or something. Okay. Okay. Um, so this will be required to content, be continued. Are you acceptable to reschedule this to October 16th? Does that work with you? Is it possible? Or, so my question to you um, is, if we keep the October 16th, um, could I potentially submit uh, information? information? Oh, absolutely. Oh, no, 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 no. The, the, if you'll take a number, uh, talk to Mr. Denham after you leave here. Um, the communication will start, and then everybody will be able to uh, see where the other side stands. Oh, yes, it's, it, it's not... Uh, it, it's not, oh, so here's the October 16th date, and we'll see you back, and this gentleman standing at the doorway will uh, talk to you and communicate between now and that time. So 
So the, uh, this, there's the thing that could be resolved okay, the prior to the 16th. Or absolutely. Or Potentially, the the potential is there. All right. Um, all right. Whatever works for you. I think that that's my answer. So then we'll continue to October 16th. <clears throat> And so in the meantime, um, yeah, just communicate with Mr. Denham, and if there's a resolution between you and he, uh, then you won't have to come back. If there isn't any, then we'll see you back in October 16th. Thank you. All right. Before you leave real quick, I just got to check something with you. Um, okay. Is this to your email, ogcrow12 at gmail.com? Have you been, we probably sent you at least four emails. Have you been getting those? Uh, just check, uh, make sure you don't have any junk mail from aabclerk.org. We'll make sure to um, give you a heads up before the hearing and if any paperwork wasn't submitted on time. So keep an eye out for that in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Brendan. Next item is item 25 through 27. Application uh, 17 108 11 through 13. Jose Rivelas. Is Jose here? Yeah. Oh, hi. hi. Okay. <laughs> and it looks like you have um, the next one, too, items yeah. 28 through 30, right. yes. P and, uh, PC Enterprises. This is, a, uh, this is the same situation as the prior or no confirmation of appearances submitted. I did talk uh, in, before the hearing started with Mr. Rovas this morning about what would have to be done. Um, so um, he's aware this has to be rescheduled. Um, this is a mix of commercial properties and residential properties. So I don't know if the assessor has a difference of opinion on this. For me, because it's the same applicant, I'd like to do October 16th with the hope that we can uh, remedy everything prior to. Um, uh, Mr. Denham, of course, is will be available to talk to. Okay. Um, the other person that you'll need to talk to with regards to the commercial, I have his business card right here. Okay. And you can contact him uh, via email if you want, or you can go downstairs and ask for him and say that uh, uh, you'd like to talk about the case. I don't know if you have any information. Not with me today. Okay. <coughs> so it's better for me to... That's fine. Get the info and then the That's fine. You, you'll have this. Okay. Um, will you be able to get us the information within 30 days? Of course. Okay. Okay. And are you okay with going to October with this? October 16th? Yeah. Yeah. So again, the key is really communicating with the assessor. Right. Uh, good communication. You'll probably get it resolved before October 16th. Um, Thank you. But Thank you. Um, if you just continually communicate well with them and, and if there's a resolution and you know then, then that's good. If if no oh, yeah. we'll see you on October sixteenth. Thank you so much. All right, thanks. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye bye. All right. Chris, I'll need about two or three minutes here. Not a problem. Okay. It's all good. Okay. Okay. Moving swiftly to item forty six, it's application one seven one 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 five seven. Uh uh, Math, Lied, L, I'll spell it. I'm going to say Matilde. Matilde, yeah, no, it's Matilda. Is it Matilda? Yeah, because Americans can say Matilde. <laughs> <laughs> Matilda. And how do you pronounce your last name? It's Etimadi. Oh, very nice. Are yeah. you re are you um, are you ready to move ahead uh, with your I, presentation? I think so. I think so. Hold on one sec. I just want to uh, make sure so you're uh, so you're good to go into the assessor. Uh, yes, the assessor is ready to move forward. Uh, okay. We're estimating about 15 minutes. Okay. And to Matilda, how long do you think your presentation may take? Oh, I don't think very long because I haven't seen anything like this before. You know. So very nice. I've <laughs> <laughs> Neither have we. <laughs> so I'm doing my best. You know, whatever I was told to bring in, I did. Lovely. And I will just let you know. Okay, so you'll probably be the second case that we hear um, after this gentleman. We're just uh, going to see who else is here, so, uh, so, so just hang tight. Um, so the next one is item 47, application 1711165, Greg Mazza. Oh, okay, great. And are you ready to move ahead? No, I'm just going to get a continuance to the October 16th. Okay, October 16th. 
is his request to the assessor? Uh, his request is uh, agreed to by us. There was no confirmation of appearance. Uh, so we're, uh, you know, we have no, no qualms about agreeing to a continuance. It looks to be a residential property. Um, so uh, I'll let you talk to him. No, I have a question. Do I have to, prior to that hearing, submit a confirmation? Your verbal agreement on the record here today is your agreement to show up on October 16th. So other than working with the assessor's office, we don't need any paperwork. So again, the key is the communication with the assessor. And if you were to uh, be okay. in um, agreement with the assessor over the value before October 16th, okay. then that's wonderful. If not, you know, we'll see you back okay. October right. 16th. Um, your pen. Okay, let's see who else isn't here. The next one item is item 48, application 1711170, Sasha Uganovich. Uh, this applicant uh, informed the clerk that. He had a medical emergency. Uh, his child had to be admitted to the hospital, um, and he agreed to continue it to May 22nd, 2018, uh, pending your approval. Sure. When did you talk to him? Uh, well, he called last week to inform his child had a medical emergency and would be admitted in the hospital today. So uh, I think I have an email documenting that, but I did not print it out this morning. Sure, so we'll just continue that to May 22nd. Any comments from the assessor? Uh, would the clerk of the board contact the applicant about uh, October 16th? Uh, I don't know if we'd be able to get him to agree to that before we adjourn the hearing this morning. Um, we can attempt to um, do that, possibly. Uh, I don't know. We'd have to have a, a, a firm date before the hearing officer is done today. You, you know what? As this was the case, then let's go ahead and do the 22nd. Okay. All right. So uh, you're approving the request to continue to May 22nd? Yes. All right. Thank you. That's for 48. Next item is item 51, application 1711186, Stephen Krebs. This uh, applicant is, uh, wife was pregnant and expecting <laughs> delivery today, so uh, we discussed it with him on Friday, and the uh, request is to approve uh, continuance to May 22nd. I'm glad he has his priorities correct. He was actually going to show up today. And me and Mr. Horn discussed it, and we're like, oh, let's no, let him no, 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 I'm not, him I'm not <laughs> having him sit here and get a message oh, right. via text, oh, it's go time. <laughs> no. Right. no, no, um, so uh, nobody have rubber gloves, it's complicated. Yeah, so the request is to continue to May 22nd. To the assessor? Uh, May 22nd is fine. We'll, we'll, uh, improvise. Yeah, we'll will give him uh, a, a little slack. We'll approve it to May 22nd. And uh, let me, so we have number eight left. Let me just check. Paul. Arm Brewster. Arm Brewster. Any comment from the assessor? Uh, the assessor was prepared to move forward today. Okay. Um, the assessor talked to the applicant yesterday. Uh, it, all indication was that we were going to move forward, uh, uh, but I don't know, uh, maybe in talking to me yesterday that brought on whatever medical condition. Anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that. <laughs> Um, Did you want us to trail this, Mr. Uh, yeah, so he, this applicant had called this morning um, and spoke with our front counter, indicating that he had a child emergency, and I've been trying to get uh, someone to get a hold of him to confirm his availability. Um, so um, you can either just continue it to a date of your choosing due to his non-response, or 
Um, we can trail it until we're done with the other two and come. Um, we'll just trail it. Okay. We'll, we'll see. See if um, I can figure something out while we. Okay. We'll see what happens. That moves us to our first hearing with Mr. Uh, Newman. Come on up. Thank you, sir. Again, welcome. Well, thank you. Um, this is again item number 16, application 1710703, RNC Newman Revocable Trust, with Richard and Christine Newman. Okay. And this is a um, a request to reduce the 2017. Uh, you can have a seat. Uh, 2017 you. assessed value, um, just a decline in value. This is a residential property, and it is marked that this is not owner occupied. Is that correct, sir? Do not live in the property? Not full time. Okay. So it looks like the burden of proof would shift to the assessor. Is that correct? No. It would shift to the applicant. It shifts shift to, to the, the applicant. applicant. Sorry. 50 <laughs> 50. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I won't buy my lottery <laughs> ticket. Today. Yeah. Um, so, yes, uh, the burden of proof. Uh, is with the applicant. It is a single-family uh, residence uh, on uh, Hollywood Beach. Uh, Ocean Drive. Mm -hmm. Ocean Drive. Very Beach nice. Front. Beach front. Okay. So uh, I believe that's a quick overview of where we stand, and we'll be up to uh, uh, Mr. Newman to proceed. Very nice. So you'll be presenting first. And then the assessor will present their case, and then each side will have time to ask the other side questions, and then we'll have a uh, wrap up, and then uh, that will be it. So, Can I yes, please. Up? Thank you so much. Oh, uh, don't, don't yeah, this. don't worry about me. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You were only asked to bring no. four. You did everything correctly. Okay. Okay. Um, proceed, sir? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, I've tried to do, though, I put a lot of information here, is highlight uh, some of the key points. And the first exhibit, if we turn to the letter, which is the letter that we submitted back in December, and I really just want to make a couple of comments. One was, uh, well, first of all, you're, the, the people here at the county are always so helpful, transparent, and we really do appreciate that. And I w it was suggested I focus on three comps which were built in the 90s and 2000, uh, and which I did. If we move to the second page, uh, my issue comes down if on the top of the second page of the letter, uh, which I highlighted, is the fact that uh, the two high comps, which are within 2 percent uh, under the assessor's stipulated value, within 2 percent of my value. Yet these two properties average 15% more square footage in the buildings. So literally 450 more square feet in each of those properties. And that's be like two good sized rooms that are 15 by 15. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just don't think we should be within 2%. Uh, our analysis, though the average is 15, has us within 12% uh, uh, of those two properties. There was the third one that was pointed out that was built in the 90s is on a corner lot. Interesting enough, that one is 9% less square footage than ours, and my value that we've come up with proposed is to be 5% greater than that. Frankly, would have been closer to the 9% had they not been on a corner lot. Uh, next, I would Unless if I'm open to uh, stopping and going through anything. Uh, I thought it'd be next helpful just to give a quick glimpse of the four comps that we looked at. Okay. okay. And uh, I first took the, that would be in the issue. exhibit two, sir, right there. Yep. Okay. First colorful page. There we go. So this one, though, was not, this one was built actually in 75, so I discounted it. Uh, but it does highlight the fact that 
our value that we suggest is 34 percent higher than this. Okay. And we have 19 percent more square footage, so it seemed reasonable considering the age. Uh, next one, 3501, is the one that's the corner lot. Beautiful home. It is true that ours is uh, 9 percent larger square footage. Uh, however, the county has a 16 percent premium to this corner lot, and the corner lot normally does draw a 5 to 10 percent premium. If we go to 30, and again, it's uh, frankly uh, every bit as nice, have many more amenities than we have in addition to the size. Then the last one is 30, that's our home, uh, and in this case, uh, again, the county has us within 2 percent of the two highest, uh, even though they have the greater square footage. Uh, and you'll see later there is a direct correlation of beachfront properties to the size of the structure if you're on the same size uh, of beach lot. But, uh, you know, we're, we're within 12 percent of the value of the two highest, though we're 15 percent smaller. So if you, the, the next table, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm cognizant of your valuable time. This was the table that I submitted on December and appreciate the county looks at the whole property, not breaking it up structure, but land. Uh, but I took the approach, if you look in the far right hand column, and I assumed percentages of land. And obviously, the first one is a teardown. And so, pretty easy to know the land was worth 1.550, which was that first property. I took, and you can see the average of all of these properties that I assumed is the same as I assumed for ours. Now, this is eight properties all on the same beach, all with the same beachfront. Uh, I took the average of the eight land, which is the 1970. Then I looked at the structure value of the three closest ones that were built in 94, 06, and 04. And you can see, because the sizes are different, that obviously the structure value would be different. Uh, I had our property at 852. The largest is at a million one, because it's 18 percent bigger than ours. The next highest value at 960, because it's that's 12 percent higher than ours, and the other, even though it's on a corner lot, 675 because it's smaller than ours. I think it's pretty logical. And it turns out if you use the average of those three structure costs per square foot, which I re-engineer into it, it's 277, which I applied to our square footage to get the 2822. And hearing that the county would like to look at the whole property I did a new chart, not that you don't have enough charts to look at, but uh, the last page, I would uh, direct us to the column on the left where I put a little number one. And here I compared the 3501, which was built in 94, 3535 built in 06, 3837 built in 04. Then I took the average of the four comps, the average of the three top comps, the average of the top two comps. In the second, uh, in the column that is got the square footages, you can see that the one built at 3501 has 2,791 or less square footage than our house. However, 3535 has 12 percent more. 3618, or for the house 3837, is 18 percent more. And when you average the four comps, interesting enough, the square footage comes out almost identical to ours. And the average price of those is almost, well, 2.798 2 compared to my 2.822. I then looked at the three average highest comps, the ones that were suggested to me. There the average is 3,031, but if you divide that by the 7%, because it's 7% bigger, you get 2842 compared to my 2822. Then you take the top two, 
and they average out at 3197, which you can see the county is suggesting I be at 3144. But if I divide 3197 by that 15%, I get 2789. So it's pretty amazing the correlation of how if you're on the beach, and we do rent our home out to friends, family, and other people, I have two more rooms. <laughs> it's a lot more valuable than one I have today. Three bedrooms, a converted office. And so I just don't, I mean, the county's wonderful and really appreciate the transparency, but the answer that I get back is, well, but I bought it for 2.8 something in 2010. Well, I bought it at the worst time. I mean, 2010 was not a, a good time to be buying. And, you know, it, I don't think it should be what I paid for back eight years ago. My wife wonders about that, too. But in any case, uh, that's how I, I felt R2822 was reasonable, considering the fact that I actually uh, am giving a premium to the other properties except for the square footage. I know this is complicated, so if there's any it's questions. Impressive. Right. Okay. But I think the bottom line is I don't think I can be virtually the same with two properties that are have two more equivalent to two rooms that are 15 by 15 sure. and we're on the same Hollywood Beach. Spent some time on this. Okay. Any questions from the assessor to the applicant? Yes. Sir. What do you do for a living? <laughs> the engineer. The engineer. Yeah, has to be. We knew that. How big the frame? No, that's not right. I counted first the uh, times he said percentage. I think about twenty-two times. Uh, so I just that was that was in looking at that was the first question, and uh, I think the only question I had I would I just needed to know on the record what he did for a living because. What he what he cranked out was uh, was nice. It really was. I I, so I, I I say I, I'm I so I'll I'll defer to Mr. I do have a question. Mm -hmm. um, the just as actual historical fact, the beaches peaked roughly 2007 2008 in their pricing, and then they declined. And then they've come back up. Um, so, is it your perception, like your value that you came up with is one percent less than you paid for it in 2010? Is it your perception that your house has declined in the last eight years? No, I don't think so. In value? No, I don't think so. But then your actual price is less than what you paid. Well, for. I mean, I, I frankly, okay. I didn't look at. I mean, I, am I okay with our original price or where we were last year? Of course. This is not a, as much of a science as I made it, but gotcha. but I don't think I should be within within two percent. It's not even of the two highest. Yeah, I, I, significantly. I different. And where does the two percent come from? Oh, okay. If you take three, if you take the three point one four four that yeah. you have us at, mm -hmm. and if you average the two top ones, which is two three point one nine seven. Gotcha. Um, you know, one thing I have to confess to you, mm -hmm. and this will kill you. <laughs> We don't average. Okay. Okay. So let's take, let's take. We don't. We don't. Average. Yeah. Well, take. Yeah. Let's let's take them one at a time because that's yeah. why I did that. Yeah. So I'm within two percent of the highest, at three point two, and I'm yep. a little less of the one point three point one nine five. Right. And those are the two highest. I am above the third one that I was suggested to look at, and I'm a, you know five percent higher, and they're on a corner lot. Which I think is so. Uh, again, the assessor. It's probably a good time if you have any questions about his no. presentation. No, that was. I didn't know where the two percent came from. So okay, that was that answer. Thank you. All right. Do you have any questions? <laughs> um, <laughs> not right now. Okay. So, thank you. Uh, pass down, sir. Thank you, sir. To the clerk of the board. Okay, uh, to the assessor, go ahead and start your. Once again, these are. I, I, I did have a question. I'm sorry, and and just 
going back, what did you estimate your home to be worth as of January 1st, 2017? Is it still roughly $2.7? No, no, no. I'm sorry, sir. It was $2.8. It's $2.8 or $2.822. It's on this page. I'm sorry. It's in the letter. Okay, yeah. So it's just $2.8. But if we paid $2.850, I'm like, I mean, I appreciate that this is. So your contention is as of January 1st of 2017, your home was worth $2.8 roughly. Yeah, and we did pay $2.850. Obviously, things depreciate. We're just looking at the 2017. So that's how much you think it was worth on that day. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. That's all right. Just want to kind of reiterate that the taxpayer paid $2.85 on March 31st, 2010. This is eight years later. A couple things. This is, we start out, here's a general picture of the applicant's home. Some interiors from third party. Obvious location on the sand to confirm. He is absolutely correct. We used three comparable sales. They all reached $3 million. They are two larger, one smaller. And those comps after adjustment, both by adjusted value and by sales price, generally support our final value. What we have noticed along the beach area, and the taxpayer alluded to it, is that we do not believe the properties have indeed declined since 2010. One of the reasons is the general real estate market. But in addition to that, we have found that Airbnb has had an undue influence in this area for the following reason. Some areas, Airbnb, like Ojai, was taken away by the government. And that created anxiety for Airbnb in the Ojai area. In this area, that anxiety was removed by the Coastal Commission. You may not be aware, even the taxpayer may not be aware, but the Coastal Commission has ruled that Airbnb must be allowed along the coast. And to be honest with you, two years ago, I didn't think I would be looking at three $3 million sales right now. And I tie it personally directly into the pressure from Airbnb in this sense. A lot of people that used to, say, go to Newport Beach and places like that through the computer have now discovered Oxnard. When they got here, they stayed here. And keep in mind, this is a person maybe from Michigan or Nebraska or Colorado. They found our beaches similarly or as delightful as Newport. And while they were here, they went out and started looking at houses. And these guys said, well, how much is this? They looked at an open house and said, well, it's $3 million. And they fainted. Not that it was high, but they were used to Newport where that same house might have been 7.8. So this has driven our market. And this is established, and it's one of the things that's definitely made our properties appreciate, not depreciate, especially in the last eight years. And it's reflected in these comps, especially comps one and two, which are newer. Comp three was extensively remodeled. That's the only reason we used it. And even then, we still kicked it down a little. We kicked it for age. But these are the kinds of places that they like to go to for Airbnb. And it includes our subject property. And they have now whether this particular taxpayer directly benefits from Airbnb isn't the question. It's the general market. And because of that, you are seeing the $3 million plus prices. And you're seeing us assess accordingly. And that's basically why we came up with what we did. And I hope and it's reflected in the comps. They're there for a reason. And that's all pushed by kind of what I've said. I've kind of done an extensive study of over a million dollar properties. And along the coast and Westlake Village are particularly strong. Every other area is kind of down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Case is submitted. Counsel are excused.
and that's our then we're reflecting what the market is doing, and that's why we came up with the value that we did, um, which is by the way still below his Prop 13 value, oddly enough. Okay. And so our final value is three million one forty four. And to the applicant, did you have any questions to the assessor regarding his uh, presentation? Well, uh, a comment that I certainly wouldn't run through Airbnb, and I doubt that these people do. Okay. Airbnb, I mean, and I think number two, uh, I was told not to look at anything not built in the 90s, so that's the only, I did put it in my initial analysis. But, uh, but these two are the ones that are 15% bigger, and if I were to rent through any place, and I have two more rooms, I mean, I can get four more people, and obviously I would rent for more, so, uh, sure. I, sure. I mean, I'm just asking to be within 12% of these two guys, <laughs> that's all. Sure, yeah. okay, and did you have any questions? Sorry. No, I, I, you know, I, I have these same two comps. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, let's see. I had some questions. So what? So what are you saying? That, that uh, Airbnb has driven up prices on beach homes? Yeah, whether they do it. Or, yeah, whether you do it or not, because of this reason, uh, Airbnb can come and go in different jurisdictions, like they did in Ohio. They were. What do you mean, come and go? Um, the government can in, uh, outlaw. It, literally. Well, they could outlaw it in Oxnard. No, they can't. Why is that? That's why. That's the point I made, uh, because. The Coastal Commission, mm -hmm. of all people, came in because the Mandalay, there's already been the case, it's already gone to the state Supreme Court, so I'll make you familiar with it, but the uh, Mandalay Bay Homeowners Association said, we don't want any Airbnb, mm -hmm. and we're going to fine you $1,000 a day if you do it. And the court immediately came in and said, no, you're not. Put it on hold, and then they, they sort of had a hold on it, and they never enforced it. And then what happened was the court finally ruled and said, it's now permanent. Um, the Coastal Commission came in and they said categorically, we, under the, this is California, keep that in mind, under the guise of the access to the beach, you cannot restrict Airbnb within the coastal areas, period, all the way up the whole state, which includes Oxnard. And they specifically attacked the Oxnard Homeowners Association. And the Oxnard Homeowners Association has since withdrawn all their rules and there's Airbnb at Mandalay Bay. And my point is this has created a different Airbnb market than even, say, you know, Ojai or Oak Park or any other place where a jurisdiction could potentially restrict or deny Airbnb. It's, it's, it's created um, a certainty for investors and current homeowners that if they want to in the future, one of their options is certainly to Airbnb. Whether they do it or not is not the point. It's created that. And that's why you see the prices that you see. These prices of $3 million, he's right. Um, I've done his house several years. They were, you know, high twos um, until the last year and a half or so. And then they, and that's because of the certainty I've connected it at least with that. And the gen obviously the general real estate market in Ventura County has been positive. But in particular in this area, Airbnb cannot go away. It's a certainty. As opposed to so even you know, in it, even in a con in, condo, it doesn't matter. And the reverse has happened in Ojai. We're noticing the million dollar market is a little softer there than it was a year and a half ago when they removed Airbnb. So there's a, in other words, we've seen it positive and we've seen it negative. There's a there's a regardless of your political belief, I'm not going there, but economic belief, Airbnb does contribute. <laughs> To a positive real estate environment, which is what is done vis-a-vis -vis the three comps you see. Why are there three three million dollar comps here? Um, because we hadn't cracked three million. I'd be the first to say that. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, in kind of an average year, we're cracking it. Um, and not once, not twice, but three times. And so um, that's why he got an assessment reflecting that market. And. And it was reflected in the comps that that manifested them. Okay. Thank you. Any well, comments from the applicant? Yeah, I mean, I first of all, I don't think Airbnb affects three million dollar properties if that's that these are. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I want reflected is the two primary comp they're using, fifteen percent bigger than my house. 
-hmm. and we're on the same beach. And that just doesn't add up. And don't have to be an engineer to say that doesn't make sense. Now, it doesn't mean these two didn't sell for north of three. I don't think it's because Airbnb. I think it's because they're very large sized properties. Well, how about Comp 3 then? Uh, Comp 3, I, I don't understand. I was told to discount it because it was built in the 80s, so I didn't study it. But, you know, Comp 3 uh, has been just remodeled. You know, and again, you know, some people come in, let's face it, whether you're paying two million eight or if somebody wants something at three million, they're going to pay three million. Uh, but that is an anomaly for me because I must say I'm surprised that the square footage of that, because I did have it on my initial one and took it off. I did compare it to the one that was built in 94, as I was asked to, and that is 9% uh, less than ours, and the price is 5% less, so uh, that correlates. This this would be an outlier, but I don't think because this one outlier out of three or four or eight, because one, one can look at the analysis I did in December, and you know that looks at all of them and discounts the size of the when they were built. But I don't think Airbnb. I, I think properties along the beach are a premium, and there's more people looking to be there. But so I don't question that. You know, it's a wonderful place. Okay. Um, so, any final comments from the assessor? Uh, yeah, I guess we go first. Um, our data speaks for itself. There are three comps. They're not outliers, they're just comps. And um, absolutely some properties, maybe not any of these, or maybe some of these, are in some cases solely purchased for Airbnb purposes. So the, the, there is no, there is 100% proof that they affect the market. And when they're withdrawn, as in the case of Ojai, there's 100% proof that they affect the market negatively, which means that Airbnb does affect the real estate market. It's too big. There's you know, 100,000 people a month looking at it, and it does affect the prices because it brings people that may have gone to Newport Beach, that may have gone to Manhattan Beach, that may have gone to San Diego into a little community called Oxnard mm -hmm. they never heard of, especially if they live in, you know, Podunk, Michigan. Mm -hmm. And then they get out here, and they're used to, you know, 10 million, 12 million La Jolla type prices, and they get here, and um, sadly, we're the bargain of the beach um, in Southern California, whereas, um, as cheap as we get, so they're surprised, and the cheap is now being pulled up. That's why we see three, three, three and a half, three million dollar sales before this year, like that, on this beach of that size homes. And now we do. We had them in Mandalay, but they were big homes. They were like six thousand foot homes. Now we have them, really, around three thousand feet up or down. Okay. And right. any, any final you. comments from well, the other thing would be, I, I, I mean, I think if you're going to use three, you got to discount the first two because they're fifteen percent bigger. The third one, okay, increase it, but two out of the three here are, I, I, our property is not worth 2% out of the two or three. Uh, I don't know about the third one because I didn't study it. But okay. Yeah. Um, but thank you so much. Yeah. And Rick, thank, thank you. you. I mean, you guys are so good. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to look through your stuff. Um, I'll close the hearing and um, uh, I'm going to hear uh, yes. Matilda's and then I'm going to break it down that. and. Since you do have a lot of numbers, sir. I want to go over the percentages. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate it very much. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Good job. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Silva? Um, I apologize for this. Uh, no worries. Thank you so much. So we will uh, please okay. sit. Uh, so that one again, Brendan. I'll I'll take it under submission. Yes, please. And looks like we are on forty six. Forty six. It's application one seven one 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 five five. Correct. Six. I can't see. Yeah, that, that's what it's a. Uh, this is a residential property. It uh, was marked that it was owner occupied. Uh, you live in the property, ma'am? Yes, I do. Okay. So, um, and it's challenging the purchase date assessment for 
uh, May 20th, 2016, for uh, relief applying uh, beginning with the 2017 year. So very nice. So you saw how the presentation goes. So what will will be similar to that? And this is you lived in the property. You live in the property and now. In property. Okay. Yes. And I apologize that I'm not more formal because I appealed uh, my property tax in Buffalo. Yes. And that didn't take very much at all. And this is. Well, Ventura wait, County is wait, better than Buffalo. Yeah, our, our numbers <laughs> are a lot lower. Lower. <laughs> We're arguing a lot lower percentage, that's for sure. Well, um, and, and there's no snow. Yes. So that's that's why I have uh, handwritten three. stuff here too. To, I, I was it's, not aware fine. that it's this fine. is such no, a high no. class <laughs> event here. It's Ventura <laughs> County for you. So let's say, so Oak Run, this is in beautiful Oak Park. Yep. And yeah. we will, uh, so the burden of proof is on the assessor. That is incorrect. Uh, the burden of proof. It rests with the applicant. Um, the assessor takes the burden of proof so far as this is a single family residence, mm -hmm. but she is contesting the price that she paid that we accepted. Okay. So burden of proof is on the applicant. Burden of proof shifts to the applicant to overcome that. Okay. So, um, I brought with me up what? Sorry, Mr. Oh, Curtis. I'll learn. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay, Mr. Rootsu. Yeah. It's all good. Definitely um, not lottery ticket oh, okay. buying day. So well, uh, you were technically right because we didn't have the fact that they accepted <laughs> yeah. the purchase price yet, and that shifts it. So, so um, so do I have start to first. Skip you. Uh, start Who? with those yes. two. So uh, those two uh, because yes. I have highlighted in here, but not in the other ones because I didn't know. That's Beautiful, right. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best one. Yeah, yeah. None of us matter. And so these are not highlighted. So. No, 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 no. It's okay. <laughs> so just to confirm, you feel that your home uh, is worth two hundred fifty-three thousand, and the assessor is saying two hundred sixty-five thousand. Is that correct? That is correct. The two hundred sixty-five thousand is the Two hundred sixty thousand dollars that she paid mm -hmm. with factoring. Okay, so we're only off by twelve thousand. Uh, Correct. No, actually, we're off by seven thousand. Seven thousand. Okay, we'll close that gap. We are closed. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Close, but go ahead. I I didn't quite understand what you meant by your what did you gap. Um, the value that you feel your home was worth. When you bought it, correct? when I bought it, it was two hundred fifty-five, and you can look at it right now. Um, it is the first one. If you open this one, oh. it's the first one. It's the one. This is all. Um, the list price was here to I think two hundred sixty-six, but it was hard to sell apparently. Say it was sitting on uh, on the market for some time, mm -hmm. and there was not there was supposedly one backup offer, which I believe was a contractor who wanted to buy it because uh, okay. uh, it was not it was not selling because it had a few uh, quite a few uh, disadvantages. Now, okay. I. Um, I'm tr just trying to find the page with uh, the two where he is going for the uh, 255 and it starts here. If you go to the picture page, here to the photos, mm -hmm. which I, I haven't numbered of course now either, it's a subject photo page. Did you find it? In this location map, no. when you come to the sure. pictures, because I was asked to bring uh, pictures at the time of transfer, mm -hmm. and it the page looks like this here. Okay. And what did you want us to look at? It says. Uh, I had highlighted it. Subject front mm -hmm. six five three Oak Run Trail sales price two fifty five. Yes. So that's what the uh, uh, appraiser arrived at. Okay. And 
the front is pretty much like this one. It's not exactly mine, but it's uh, very much the same, where you have the one bedroom, because they're all, I have only one bedroom, one bathroom uh, co condos here. That's it. And uh, the only difference is obviously the ground floor, second, third, and, and penthouse eventually. And of course, a big problem is the view, because my view is this one at the bottom here, subjects, I'm sorry, yeah, subject, the street, so right the there, not very, on the uh, ground floor, yeah, oh. ground floor, yeah, ground. Um, I have the cars almost immediately because what you hear, what you see here is the first row of carports, that's the one I look at, and you see how dark it is already here, it's usually dark, you know, I have to have about five, six lights on in the living dining room area, mm -hmm. which is, you know, not... <laughs> kind of can get costly, of course, you know, with so many lights. Um, and then there is this street, and then there is a, a opposite is another um, carport, and then yet another. So there are three rows uh, of carports I'm looking at, mm -hmm. and with very little light, I would say. And in addition, and I can't see it here. In addition, uh, I'm right... Uh, it's situated right where the stairs are, and there are three uh, air conditioners right in front of my patio, oh, okay. which are pretty noisy, uh, I have to say. And the back side, I see nothing. That the places the back side, they are about uh, the subject rare. I have nothing to do with that. You know, that's uh, that these uh, are entered through the breezeway, and they, that's why I have so much traffic going through, because this is the way uh, they get the other owners get into their condos. And there is uh, hills, there is, uh, I would say, almost mountains there. Um, the canyon, it's right at the canyon, bordering onto the wild animal area, which uh, you see every day now. And, uh, and that makes a price difference, I have noticed, from up to $20,000. So, real quick, so your unit 204, mm -hmm. you're 204. on the second floor. Ground, no, it's ground floor because when you go through the breezeway, there are steps down, and uh, that is, I guess, this must be the let the one the one uh, numbered uh, condo condominiums. I go in there to the second ground yes. because I need it because that was my problem why I agreed to this uh, higher price then because I have a disabled dog mm -hmm. and I have to carry him the stairs, you know, so I I could. I, I didn't have much of a choice, you know, so I just took it because it was after a long search. It was the only one I found ground floor where I could walk straight in with my dog, okay, without having to carry him because I, he's too heavy to be carried. Okay. As simple as that. Okay. So. So. So uh, this bag I do not see, but these are the expensive ones. There's a the, there's the higher prices come in here from the back, from the condos on the back of the building. But as I said, we see just we see just the carports here, mm -hmm. and it's three rows of carports. And then you see it's in the apartment that looks well. It's uh, it was vacant, and uh, here uh, again, these are the air conditioners that I have right out here next to my living room and bedroom, and. Here you see a little bit better the cardboards too. So that's the view. And the comparables were, uh, let me see, that's the hand, I have it in the handwritten stuff, the comparables. I have uh, one, I have a total of four in the, in the handwritten stuff, if oh, you want okay. to take, yeah, in the handwritten one. You see page two, I have listed the comparables uh, okay. in the handwritten stuff. Uh, and two of those are here, 5728, I'm sorry that uh, I didn't ha highlight it, I just highlighted it for him. So it's it's comp uh, number one and comp number two? And comp number two, mm -hmm. yeah. The, uh, they're right there. And they have both the same sales price mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and 
So uh, what what else was there? And they both had few, and, and I have it. I have it here. You know, the one five seven two eight. The first one had was moving ready, and so was the other one. It was also a turnkey unit, and. In the description of the realtors, you know, that's where I took it from. They have both an excellent location, few of hills. The, the, the same applies to the second one, few of hills, open space. They have privacy, uh, particularly the one, the com comp comparable one, um, has, uh, is a top floor, is a penthouse with uh, vaulted ceilings, oversized living room, and a whole lot of uh, improvements they made, such as carpeting uh, and uh, flooring. And the comparable two about the same, but uh, it's uh, also because given from the number 308, it's probably also a penthouse. And both of them were sold within two days at exactly the same price, 269,000. Taxable was the same and it was higher and the taxes, that's all I could recover the, uh, on information on the taxes was 2,904, while the other one was 3,000, was 1,000 more. So these two were just about 9,000 more than mine with, with uh, 260. And that's very little. You know, I think uh, that they got a very good deal here. They have all these advantages with views. And you could see, you know, oh, in the, the other one, that uh, the last one, comparable four, had a sales price of 291. Uh, again, it's a penthouse and with views to hills and mountains, you know, like the bedroom, because I looked at this one because it's a friend of mine who owns that. Um, so when they wake up in the morning, their view is uh, the Santa Monica Mountains, you know, and not a car park, you know, where all people, you know, have their cars parked and go to work and, and whatever else. And vaulted ceilings, and this one was uh, 291,000, but the taxable was only 270, and that was one question I had. I did not understand how uh, some of those sales prices were raised up to 2% immediately, and some stayed the same, and some uh, uh, get uh, you know much, much lower uh, base uh, baselines than, uh, than the other one who started out already, you know, with a 2% increase. Even so, it says somewhere, you know. Well somewhere in those uh, in this package we'll, we'll address that in our presentation and, and take care of answering those questions mm -hmm. well, with regards to the percentages and um, and and why some people may have gotten a two percent increase and other people's other people didn't but we'll be able to we'll be able to go all the way through that okay so please continue okay so, so Matilda, just so I'm yeah. clear, so you're saying your your home when you bought it was worth two fifty three, correct, or two fifty five? Two fifty. I think the baseline should have been uh, because it was then two sixty because two for some reason yeah, they raised it. Yeah, two fifty three or two fifty five. Two two fifty three. I think the two the baseline should have been two fifty three. Okay. Yeah, that okay. was my that was my concern. Mr. Curtis, since we're on that subject, can I clarify or, or try to attempt to clarify something with the applicant? Um, and I should have caught this previously. Are, are you aware that the hearing officer has to find that your value is five percent lower than your purchase price in order to adjust it? Meaning he would have to find that your property value is two hundred forty seven thousand dollars or less on your day of purchase and able to be, to be even be a, legally able to reduce it. So if you're saying it's 255, it doesn't meet that marker. And so even if he agrees with you today that it is 255, he won't legally be allowed to reduce I see. it. Okay. Uh, Are you um, acceptable yeah, yeah, with sure. that? Uh, I, I just want to save no, your no, no. time. Uh -huh. If you yeah. understand that rule, yeah, that, you, you know, I don't want you to waste your efforts mm -hmm. uh, here. Of course. No, um, of course it's acceptable if it's, it can be legal. Okay, so um, it, you don't think your property could was worth less than two hundred forty-seven thousand dollars on your day of 
purchase. Uh, that would not be, not be possible. That, that, no, I understand that. Okay. That's what I wasn't expecting either. So, so I apologize for not attempt realizing this issue previously and trying to explain that. It just came up to me. So knowing that rule, do you want to just um, leave, stop your appeal and, and leave it where it, it's at? Where it's at right now? Yeah. It, can, it cannot be even lowered for a couple of thousand? The the law does not allow him to reduce it unless it's Anything five percent. Unless it's five percent or more. Okay, and it would be at the two hundred forty seven, right? Right. How, you'd have to prove today that it, you on the day you purchased it it was two hundred forty seven thousand dollars or less. Oh no, it's it, it, obviously. It, it, am I inviting her correctly, assessor? Mm -hmm. That is correct. correct. Yes. Correct. So there is nothing I can do at all. Uh, but if if that's the case. Mm -hmm. And you understand that and uh, are willing to retract um, your appeal, I'll still be happy to explain the 1%, 2% questions mm -hmm. that you have. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we need to do that on camera or I can do that afterwards. It's, if, it's not necessary. Um, and, and you were not attempting to get a reduction for 2017, is that correct, ma'am? You were just going after your purchase date assessment? I thought the baseline should have been lower. But just your base that. purchase date. Yeah. But the, the property is, in my opinion, in decline because all the other three comparables I have, they went up in uh, value quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Mine was not. Mine, they had to drop it. So there is a difference. So the assessor might, might advise her about future. Okay. Future yes. values. Uh, if what, she feels that, and they may be in decline, that she could it, appeal it 2008. The, in future states. In, in August, um, I believe you will get a value notice mm -hmm. um, for the 2018 valuation or uh, roll value. You can appeal, when does the uh, date start? July, July 2nd through September 17th, I believe it is this So year. those are critical dates, so you do have to apply within mm -hmm. those dates. And you can appeal your valuation every year, oh, is that correct? Okay. That right. is correct. Uh -huh. So in other words, you could do it for 2018, 2019, okay. Okay. 2020. Mm -hmm. what, what you may want to do is Give Mr. Denham a call, um, maybe mid-July. Um, I don't know if he's going to be on vacation. He hasn't I, I will be on vacation. Oh, you'll be yeah. on vacation. Doesn't matter. Anytime so, after yeah. July. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So when you come back from vacation, mm -hmm. give Mr. Denham a call and say, "Listen, um, what's my value? Mm -hmm. That's on the roll," and have him look at it and and you can decide whether or not to file another appeal. If mm -hmm. your opinion is your va your property is in decline and you can you can prove it or you you're of the opinion you can prove it, then the appeals process is is perfect for you. Okay, then I try to yeah, this, this five percent rule only applies to your purchase date assessment. So, oh, okay. uh, and other years, a small deviation yes. you I can yeah. approve. It's just your purchase date assessment. Let's say, and, uh, I apologize again. For let's say the explaining. value was hypothetically two hundred seventy thousand, and you felt it was only worth um, two sixty five or two sixty. Whether or not it is a 5% drop doesn't play into the cards anymore. He the has, the, the, mm -hmm. the hearing officer has more latitude mm -hmm. with regards to mm -hmm. this. Because here they wrote that something like uh, it on this page here, three of six it is, it says for his reasoning was uh, that the comparable search criteria included a 20% yield A variance, and I wasn't sure what that meant. I understood it was like uh, of inferior quality. I don't know what that meant. I have, I have it all highlighted here, so... Uh, 
My problem is... It was is $255, I, and I, then it was I, changed I, for the bank. Um, I cannot comment yet yeah, uh, with regards to... Oh, uh, the... The comparable search include a 20% GLA variance. That's gross livable area. That gr gross, gross, li oh, okay. gross mm -hmm. livable area refers mm -hmm. to That's what the, that the square footage. Oh, is. Oh, okay, all right. Individual, individual yeah, I found the sentence and now here. It's one sentence here on this one. Yes, yeah. and, and with it's that... It's below neighborhood predominant value. That's what it is. It, it is uh -huh. it, your, your condo is at the lower end of the of the um, price. Apparently. The, yeah, it's, it, there's nothing cheaper. Yeah, the basically I, in Oak Park. That's, that could very, Oak, Park, that could, Oak Park's pretty yeah, expensive that area. Yeah, could well be the case because of the schools, I would imagine. You yeah, know, a lot. even, even if you particularly don't use the schools, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. mass of buyers in Oak Park do buy because the school district is very popular. Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. And I, I read the comment, the highlighted comment that you were referencing that the, uh, the appraiser made. And because he adjusted his appraisal from 255 up to 260 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. based on the fact that you and the, you and the buyer agreed. Oh, yeah, we did. Because you, 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 sure. you agreed to 260. Sure. So mm -hmm. for him, he made the notation, okay, I changed my value initially from 255 to 260 based on your contract price. And because that was... What two percent? A little less than two percent. Yeah, no he, appraisers really. If okay. we get within two percent, we okay. consider ourselves okay. geniuses, <laughs> to be honest with you. Well, <laughs> well and and you know, I, uh, I didn't have much of a choice because of my dog. You know, I had a very very hard time to find okay. a place for him. So uh, let's uh, should we close the hearing? Then you can explain. The, I I think that's uh, oh. the only thing left is Mr. Andrews. Yes. Okay. So, so oh. and just to confirm, you're okay with 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 uh, leaving the value is is withdrawing your appeal, understanding that there's this legal limitation of five percent. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have the right to, to talk and have no. make a ruling okay. if you want. I just want to save you the time of having to yeah. continue to explain no, and have to sit no, through no. assessor's presentation. It can't be so. anything illegal that's uh, out of the question. Okay. All right. All right. So, if you're accepting of that, then we can close this this hearing. Um, assuming, Mr. Hearing Officer, you, that you don't want to force a presentation, which you have the legal ability to do. No, that's fine. So <laughs> okay. we'll go ahead and close this, this hearing, uh, and then... The value will stay the same. The value okay. will stay the same. All right. I apologize for that. Okay. And um, so we can close the hearing in just a second so you can talk with the assessor. We just have one item left. Item eight. Um, I thought I had emails to it out, but it came out a mess. Uh, did you read what I forwarded you? This nope. Moment? Okay. Yeah. I got sorry. This is what I forwarded you. Uh, um, the Mr. Armbruster called and spoke with our receptionist this morning, requesting continuance. Um, and here's the email. Um, she requested that he send an email, of, as we typically do, requesting documentation. Uh, he has not responded. She attempted to she uh, attempted uh, to call him and uh, three times this morning while this hearing has been going on, and he has not answered. Um, therefore, not really sure what to do. Um, he indicated his uh, child was sick this morning. He didn't. Um, he didn't. You know, swear that that he couldn't make it or couldn't send anybody. He didn't agree to a new date. Um, so I'm not really sure what we should do. It's kind of at your discretion, Mr. Hanks. Do you want to grant a continuance or deny it for failure? Sure. Continue? So any comments from the assessor? Uh, the again, the assessor was ready to move forward today. It was my understanding that the applicant was also going to be prepared to move forward. Uh, if the hearing officer sees it fit to grant a continuance. The assessor asks that it gets moved to October 16th. All right, so let's move it to October 16th, considering he has a sick child. All right. And if you have a sick child, sometimes you're not focused on Absolutely. other stuff. Or you're a, a sick child. Or a child that's about ready to be born. <laughs> like. 
our other applicants. All right. Uh, time is 10.50 a.m. if you'd like to adjourn, adjourn the meeting. We'll adjourn the meeting, and then you can explain the you betcha. or one and the yes. park. So yes. that's what you're... Yes, I am. Um, I, in fact, I'm going to use the clerk of the board's board. 